Welcome back guys to Pinar Crossover and we're continuing our NBA Finals talk. Now we talked about the LeBron and the Cle uh, Cleveland making it a trade, uh, LeBron's a trade Finals. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about what happened in the East, the series against the Houston and the Warriors. How much does this have to do with, you know, the Game 7, not just the Game 7, but the whole series in general? How much has this affected by uh, Chris Paul's injury or Iguodala's injury in terms of what happened or what ended up, you know, Warriors winning it and going into the Finals? Chris Paul is more than just a 2010 guy. I have preached this. He is more than a 2010 guy. Mm -hmm. He gets down and dirty on defense. He goes for the loose balls. And most importantly, the quality I admire the most when it comes to CB3, the leadership. Mm -hmm. Knowing when to keep his teammates calm, mm -hmm. telling teammates where to go, helping run the team. That is why Houston brought him in. Mm -hmm. Not for playmaking only. They have Harden for that. Chris Paul is a born leader. And I don't see that 15-point collapse happening if Chris Paul is in the lineup. I don't see 27 missed, 27 three straight missed three-pointers <laughs> yeah. if Chris Paul is in the lineup. I'm not saying that it was a guarantee they would have won. Mm -hmm. because but they had a chance. They would have had a much better chance. Curry and Durant mm -hmm. heated up, but I think there would have been more consistency mm -hmm. and flow to Houston's system yeah. with Chris Paul in the lineup. No one was more devastated than the poor guy yeah. when, he, when, now, when it was announced he couldn't play. And man, so. during that broadcast when David Aldridge was you know, interviewing with Steve Kerr and he was pissed about... Uh, the first quarter, what he's seen in Game Seven with the Warriors, with his own squad, it, and then they're talking about in post game. It's just we, we could probably tell that the Warriors they weren't taking this serious enough, and if they did, if they would, it would probably been a blowout, a much bigger blowout than uh, usual. Because um, you know some some people would be saying that um, Clay Thompson wasn't shooting well, um, Kevin Durant wasn't shooting well, but if they got stick, if they're sticking to the game plan and think that you know forget about the finals, let's just win this game right now, uh, I think it would have been more serious and and it would have been it would have been done a little bit earlier. What Steve Kerr said, Steve Kerr said he wanted the game or it should have been the series should have been done by game seven, game five. Mm -hmm. Steve Kerr is a great guy. He knows his basketball and he is a very respectable coach and was a very respectable player. I'm not a fan about his. I'm not a fan of his comment regarding yeah. Iguodala being in the lineup series over in five games. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had to dis disagree with that one. Yeah, I mean, the, Iguodala does have a big impact in yes, terms of how they play that uh, death lineup that they have with him on the court. It's just because they can switch a lot with him, and he's a really good defensive player with his IQ defensively in terms of switching. Uh, his hands when he, he a couple of times in the finals when he blocked LeBron on that shot. So uh, I think he makes a big difference. But Chris Paul as well makes a big difference. The impact is not a comparable. A lot bigger impact than in yeah. terms of because when I watched that game seven in terms of how it went, like Harden, I don't think uh, I think Kevin McHale mentioned this before. Uh, Harden was a great player, but he never had that leadership quality in him. And as great of a player you are, um, the team still needs someone who can be that vocal leader. And the, the great thing about Chris Paul is he's a great player already, but he's also a great leader. And, and, and the fact that he makes everyone better and, and he knows how to get the best out of every player that he has, it's something that Harden, I don't think, ever had or will develop just because it's, it has to do a little bit with self-awareness, I think, because Chris Paul is a more self-aware player. You've seen it before when there was a play, I think, with DeAndre Jordan caught the offensive rebound, and there was still time, and Chris Paul was pointing him oh, to, shoot like, it, shoot you it. have yeah, to shoot, yeah, there's yeah. time in the clock, and DeAndre <laughs> Jordan looks at him, what are you trying to do? And that's just, I they think Chris Paul, They lost that game, right? yeah, yeah, they lost that game because of the fact that, um, and I, I think that speaks a lot in terms of Chris Paul's uh, t t intangibles, not just the things that he does in the court. And that being his first conference finals ever, and I feel, I, I just feel, so bad. I feel, feel bad. bad for the yeah. guys being uh, sidelined for the game seven, one game, 48 minutes until the NBA finals. I mean, I, yeah, I feel bad for... So were the Warriors ball. luckier with the Chris Paul injury or last season's Kawhi Leonard injury? Oof. I, think now, I think they're luckier this year, I would say. As Kawhi much as I, Leonard, the yeah. wanted, I wanted the Warriors win, Chris Paul is, is uh, because, because I thought the, uh, even though um, Spurs were up a lot on the first game, I feel like the Warriors were still a better team. It was game one. Yeah, it was Warriors game one. came off flat after a long rest. Yeah. I still feel even if Spurs did win game one, they the momentum would have shifted back to Golden State eventually yeah, and they would have still won the series. Chris Paul, different story. This was like game six, game seven, where yeah. it was, you know, where the uh, Houston was having the momentum, I think. That's what I was worried about because I was mm -hmm. a Warriors fan. <laughs> well, let's go, then now let's go to the prediction of the finals. This is what we've all been waiting for. Who's your Somewhat. pick? <laughs> well, like, I guess uh, sure. everyone knows. How many games you got this going? I don't need to tell you my pick. 
I'm going with the jersey you're wearing, Golden State Warriors here. But I think that because they're going up against a phenomenal player like LeBron James, they might give him the gentleman sweep. Yeah. 4-1. 4-1. Oh, one. All right. All right. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think LeBron James would have a chance to actually at least win one game. It's going to be another repeat of last year when I'm pretty sure they went straight to game five. Uh, Warriors will be a lot more down to the books. I know from what they looked at in the past series, Houston Rockets, they looked at it, it's like, guys, we have to be serious. If we want to win this uh, championships again, we got to do it. We got to stick to the book, play hard, and we'll, we'll probably do it again in five games. Mm. Is, is there is there um, a possible, I guess, like I'm thinking of like uh, Avengers, how it happened with <laughs> Doctor Strange looking at all the different scenarios. Is oh, there spoilers. one scenario in, is, in there one scenario in your head right now that could potentially happen that where the Cavs win the finals. What what would happen? What would need to happen in order for you know the Cavs to either take it a seven game series or to have a chance to win the finals? So like Avengers, spoiler alert, <laughs> Curry and Durant fade away. Oh, I'm yeah. just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but actually, <laughs> imagine I think the only way Cavs will have a chance is if the other role players step up to the max. Yeah. The same way the Boston role players stepped up. Mm -hmm. Kevin Love cannot be scoring just 13 points. They need that 2010 Kevin Love everyone missed back in Minnesota. They need that defensive, attack-the-rim, aggressive George Hill mm -hmm. that they brought in. They need everybody to step up. It can't just be LeBron dropping 40 points. Mm -hmm. And on to the Warriors side, I, I honestly, it's... It's not if the Royal Pels will be playing bad. It's if any of them get injured, or if, even if Andre Iguodala doesn't play the whole series, which mm -hmm. I doubt he will. He's, what, he's only not going to play in game one. Mm -hmm. And there's a stat out there where if Andre Iguodala is actually on the court, the Warriors are actually a plus 200 against the Cavaliers. And if he's off the court, the Cavaliers are at plus 40. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big stat of how much yeah. impact Andre Iguodala has and probably how much impact that if whatever one of the, one of the other players in the Warriors team if he goes if they go down but mm -hmm. I mean I, I agree to your point role players will need to step up against uh, the, the uh, Golden State Warriors in this series mm -hmm. LeBron said it best right the Warriors are one of the greatest teams ever assembled, assembled yeah mm -hmm. and then they have Kevin Durant mm -hmm. so let's point out the fact they were yeah. 73 and 9 before Durant joined yeah and Cleveland managed to upset them back in 2016 mm -hmm. And a big contribution for that was the way the front court played. Tristan Thompson was a monster on the Not offensive glass. glass. True. They need mm -hmm. that if they want to have any chance. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. But between these two that I'm going to say, because I want not the Golden State not to get injured, so I want to see kind of the best of the best. What more, uh, what's more likely we're going to see if the Cleveland will win? Is it a LeBron giving you 60-10-10, and 60-20-15, or are you going to get... 20, 15, 10 from the role players. What is more likely I mean, going to happen? On paper, he kind of has to. I mean, yeah. it's there's still role players that uh, they'll try to give their chance in uh, stepping up in the series. But then again, it, it's LeBron's team, and Le LeBron has to still so you're carry, more on LeBron carry his giving team. 60, 10, and 15. Well, 50, fi uh, more, than the, 50 points, more than probably. the role players giving you something likely, a little yeah. bit. I think so too. I think I'm le I'm leaning on LeBron. If there's anything that's gonna happen, I'm gonna. I'd rather see LeBron 60, 15, 20. You know, get a triple, double with the 60 points. So like, I'm betting that more than. Maybe he'll win Finals MVP on a losing team. <laughs> that's I think that's what he's going for. Play 40 right? means the whole. He whole knows series. that they have no <laughs> chance of winning, and he's just gonna go for that. That Jerry West. That uh, Jerry MVP. West mentality. Yeah. You know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, that's all we have right now for Pinot crossover. I hope you guys enjoy this show. Anything you guys like to say before we end the show? Uh, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media, Pernod Cross. So we got new content coming soon. Uh, continue to follow us, comment on all uh, social medias, and join our conversation. You know, What do you guys think of this NBA Finals? Who do you think is going to win? Is LeBron's legacy going to continue? Uh, is Golden State going to win another championship? What do you guys think? Comment below uh, on all the social media accounts. Thanks again for having me. I uh, look forward to discussing basketball with you two in the future. Check me out on Instagram at J-B-Y-E-E-Z-Y. You'll find me on the Six Man Podcast, ranging every basketball topic. Thank you guys again for watching, commentating, and sharing our Facebook videos. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. And other than that, stay ballin'. See you guys.